Hello everyone. Let's go ahead and start off on something a little bit different this time. So yes, Fimo Duo Entertainment present to us uh, a game where you can press F10 to skip things. But instead, we're going to go ahead and look at the introduction, because why not? Herman Livingood. I summon the Herman Livingood. Herman, dear, answer the nice lady. Oh, I guess that's a lady speaking on the right, sorry. Miss Sentra, are you certain you can make contact with my late husband? Well then, let me try to adjust the sound just a little bit. I'm not sure... Oh, and of course the sound turns off as soon as I say that. I was gonna—I was trying to play around with the sound because um, I, I'm, I always have problems with my sound levels when I make videos, and this is something a little bit different because I haven't actually made a video based on this engine before. But anyway, Miss Sentra, are you certain you can make contact with my late husband? Please, Mrs. Livingood, let me concentrate. Herman Livingood, I command thee to appear before us. Now would be nice. Whoa. Who has called upon me? Who disturbs my eternal rest? Herman, is that you? It's your beloved wife. It's Angelica. Angelica? But why awake me? What is it that you want? And I don't think there should be a comma there in the middle of that sentence. Oh, it is Herman. Herman Livingood, your wife wants to know if your death was due to your excessive smoking. Uh, it was not. I stopped smoking long before my passing. Now I'm sure it's Herman. What do you mean, Miss Livingood? Herman was always telling me he had quit, but I can clearly see he's still smoking. What? Uh-oh. Mike, your carb's on fire! Whoa. Hastily, Miss Sundra turns on the light, which was turned off to create that moody but mystical atmosphere. Click. Oh dear. It seems quite clear to me, Miss Sintra, that you're nothing more than a fraud with two exclamation marks. Well, that was that. This heat and the fire's getting bigger. Oh no! Oh no! Get me down from here, quick! Suddenly the sound of a loud snap fills the room. That didn't really sound like a snap. Mike, are you all right? Groan. After this painful event, Miss Suntra, better known as Sarah Parker, and the ghost, Mike Goodman, her boyfriend, get cleaned up. And after that, they get dirty again. Oh, no, Mike is smoking a cigarette and... Kiss. Cough. I hate it when you smoke indoors. Oh, that's the woman speaking. Cough! I hate it when you smoke indoors, Mike. Your kisses taste like cigarettes, too. Why not? It's not like the wallpaper is going to peel off the walls. There's hardly any wallpaper left in this dump. Sigh! I know it's not much, Mike, but it's a home, and we've got each other. That's all that matters. Yes, I know. I'm going to the pub. That's okay, Mike. Love you. Love you, too. Later that night. Hey, Mike. I'm not sure who's speaking, so I have no idea what kind of voice I'm supposed to give them. Hey, Steve! My, my. You sure look down. What happened? Nothing, really. It's the paranormal business, isn't it? Things aren't going the way they should, eh? You could say it like that. Today we had our first customer in three weeks, and I screwed up. That sucks. 
Yes, it does. The man at the far left of the bar followed the conversation closely. Excuse me, gentlemen, I couldn't help overhearing your conversation, but one of you practices psychic phenomenals, am I right? That's right, I do, in a way. My name is William Mayfield. Can I offer you a drink? Yes, I could sure use one after tonight. Thanks for the drink, Mr. Mayfield. Don't mention it, and please call me William. Everybody does. I'm Mike Goodman. I understand you're interested in the paranormal. Tell me, Mike, do you know the oil tycoon Maxwell Mayfield? Maxwell Mayfield? You mean he's... Maxwell Mayfield was my father, Mike. Let me tell you a story about him. A number of years ago, my father had this plan to drill for oil in Greenland. He had a station built there named Mary, named after my late mother, and that's when it all began. For the first two weeks, everything went according to plan, except that my father didn't find any oil. But then the sightings began, several employees heard hollow voices, and some saw ghostly figures. My father, a very matter-of-fact man, refused to believe them, but soon he saw it for himself. He never told me exactly what he saw, but he ordered to abandon the station immediately. That's quite the story. There's a brief moment of silence. Both men sip their drinks. I want to go there, Mike. I want to go to Mary. I want to see it for myself. And I want you to come along with me. Well, I'm not sure if... You'll get $10,000 for your services. All expenses paid. Actually, it's $10 because that's a period and not a comma, unless we're using European numbers because in most of continental Europe, periods are used where Americans would use commas and vice versa, but that really looks like $10 to me, but I'm sure it's supposed to be $10,000. That's, that's fantastic. But I don't know if my girlfriend... She can come along, too. We'll leave tomorrow. Well, what do you say? It's... It's a deal, William. We'll be there. Returning home, Mike tells Sarah the news. Sarah's thrilled with the idea and agrees to accompany Mike. The following morning, a party of ten members board the helicopter. After the routine checkup, the engines are started and the chopper takes off. Destination, Greenland. Some very nice AGI animation there. I actually quite like that. All right, once again, Fimo and uh, Fimo Duo presents Enclosure, starring Frank Bates, head of security, Chin Sung Lee, paranormal scientist, Ben Green, biochemist. Lisa McIntyre, Spiritual Guide. Watson Dustove, Cook. Owen Carter, Paranormal Investigator. Charles Benson, Doctor. William Mayfield, Head of the Expedition, we've already met him. Sarah Parker, Amateur Medium, she's our girlfriend. And you're Mike Goodman. And after ten hours of non-stop flying, the Mayfield party arrives at Greenland. But what problems lie ahead? Exclamation mark instead of question mark. Um, I'm not an expert, but can you really fly? Well, I guess, I don't know where they started, but I'm going to assume they started somewhere in North America, probably. Can you really fly by helicopter from there to Greenland in only ten hours? Because helicopters don't fly very fast. They're not really... They're not only really for distance, they're more for maneuverability because, you know, they can hover and move straight up and down. But they're not really something you'd take on a long-distance journey to Greenland, I don't think. But what do I know? Maybe they started from, uh, from Iceland. Suddenly, William Mayfield rushes from the cockpit. Frank Bates was flying the chopper, but he just passed out. We need someone who can fly this thing. Quick. Sarah whispers to you, 
You were flying helicopters during service, Mike. You can fly this chopper. But it's been six years since, you say. You'd rather die, Mike Goodman? Sarah says, slightly irritated. I guess she calls us by our full name when she's irritated. It's Also, it's nice that she's slightly irritated that we're about to die. We're, the helicopter is just about to crash, and she's slightly irritated by that situation. That's... Uh, that's how you know they're a keeper when they uh, when they get slightly irritated by something like that. Mike can fly the helicopter, Mr. Mayfield. Sarah says. That's great, Mac. But be careful. There's a snowstorm coming up right in front of us. William Mayfield says. Better get this helicopter landed safely, Mike. And this is the first interactive portion of the game. It doesn't really look interactive at first because there's still those. Uh, credits going by, but you can actually, you can move the helicopter with the arrow keys. It does actually respond to arrow key, cursor key input. I guess they're properly called the cursor keys, but I always call them the arrow keys because that seems more intuitive since they usually have arrows on them. So yeah, the goal here is just to land that helicopter on that blue platform there. But what happens if we don't? Oh, it looks like we don't have a choice. The, the wind keeps blowing me to the right of the screen, but I don't think I can actually... Yeah, I can't actually exit the right side of the screen, so... Can I crash on the ground? Oh. Oh dear. I guess I can. Okay. Alright. Well, you've just ended nine innocent lives. Congratulations. Alright. Well, that didn't last very long. For some reason I thought that maybe I couldn't crash since I wasn't able to exit off the sides of the screen, but okay. Can I restart my game? Yes, apparently I can. Alright, here we go, let's try this again. It's actually not that difficult, it's just... Uh, might catch you by surprise at first, because after that introductory sequence you might not suddenly realize that you're now able to control the helicopter. But you can, and here we go. Is everyone accounted for? You ask. Uh, Frank Bates. Did I already give Frank Bates a voice? I don't remember. I'm not good with voices. These These people are pretty nondescript in the sense that I don't really know what kind of voices they should have, so I'm trying to come up with unique voices for all of them, and that's going to be difficult, so I apologize in advance. I'm probably going to mix up some of the voices of the characters. I've already checked that, Goodman. Everyone's here, Frank Bates replies. Frank Bates seems to have regained consciousness and is obviously embarrassed for losing it earlier. Seems to me we're stuck here for now, aren't we, Mike? Charles Benson says. Well, I'm afraid so, you reply. I don't know why I've given our character uh, sort of a southern accent. I just, for some reason, perceive him as sort of a, sort of a, uh, I don't know, kind of a good old boy. Maybe I'll give him a Gabriel Knight accent. Well, I'm afraid so, you reply. Both axles broke during the landing, and the engine got filled with snow. I can fix it, but it'll take a while, Frank Bates interrupts. Uh... I think the latter part kind of goes without saying. I don't think that people intuitively expect that you, anyone can fix a helicopter instantly, especially with, uh, especially in these circumstances, and presumably without a workshop full of tools. Watson, du is that Dustove or Dustov? I really don't know how this character's last name is supposed to be pronounced. The cook shivers. You mean we can't get away from this cold place? We can. Oh, this is William Mayfield now, so I'll... Okay. We can, but not at this moment. Don't worry, ladies and gentlemen. My good friend Frank Bates is an excellent mechanic, William Mayfield says. We're in no hurry. Let's focus on what we came here for in the first place. Let's find us some ghosts, Owen Carter says. Oh, and this is Chin Sung Lee, who's that... Uh, I think they went a little bit overboard by giving uh, Chin Sung Lee that yellow skin. I mean, I guess they couldn't really approximate Asian skin tone without picking something that that absurdly yellow. That's like canary yellow, which is obviously actually makes him or her. I'm not even sure is that supposed to be him or her. Uh, it makes him or her look a bit like a character from The Simpsons, even though I, I guess it's the same color that was used for King Graham's skin in the original King's Quest. Actually... I guess it's supposed. I, I guess it's supposed to be a man because that black 
line of pixels along the bottom of his or her face is probably supposed to be a beard, but I guess that could be just long hair, but I think it's probably a beard, so I'm going to assume that, that Chin Sung Lee is probably a, uh, a, uh, a male, so I'll try to... Oh wait, I forgot to read his or her text. I got so caught up in trying to analyze the character and his or her gender that I forgot to read his, uh, his or her text message. I'm sorry. I'm, I'll, I'll have to use. I'll probably have to use a ridiculously stereotypical voice for him or her as well. So, anyway, the party agrees, and every member looks up their own apartment. And I think apartment was spelled with two P's. You and Sarah unpack your luggage, and when you see the bed, sleep takes over. You both lie down and fall asleep as soon as your heads touch the pillow. The following morning, after some hours of well-deserved sleep, you awake. You hear water running and can see Sarah taking a shower. Her beautiful figure is lined out nicely by the hot steam. And we get out of bed automatically. And here we go. Now for the first time in the game, we really have uh, a real proper adventure game interface. Uh, the interactive portion with the helicopter at the beginning was the first interactive portion. But now finally we have a real... Uh, adventure game interface where we can type things. So now that we're actually playing the game, I'll go ahead and do a little bit of preamble. Um, so yeah, this is, uh, I guess you could categorize it as a horror game. It's not really that scary. And that's part of the reason I'm playing it. I generally don't like really scary games. I know some people really like that, but um, I think I've said before, but if I haven't, I'll, I'll say it now. I, I generally don't like really terrifying games that have really grisly or terrifying things in them. Uh, don't like jump scares, um, because jump scares are really just... They're, they're kind of... In my opinion, they're, they're kind of silly. They're, there's really not much point to them. It doesn't really take a lot of creativity to put jump scares in your game. It's kind of an old trick, and I don't, I don't find it very interesting or entertaining. I think somebody said that, uh, you know how Oscar Wilde said that sarcasm is the lowest form of wit? Well, jump scares are the lowest form of horror. I think somebody else said that, but I'm, I forget who. Uh, but anyway, but this game is not really a scary game. It's just kind of a creepy game. It's sort of a little bit, uh, I mean, it's kind of spooky. It has some spooky moments in uh, in some spots for sure. But it's not really, I wouldn't really call it a horror game. It's kind of a game that has uh, some kind of creepy moments. And I like that. I mean, I like... I like moods. I like creepy moods and atmospheres and things that sort of make you feel something, but not that gross you out. I don't like splatter horror that relies on, uh, you know, graphic violence or monster things that just try to show you scary monsters and try to get you scared. That's not, not my kind of thing. But since it is Halloween, or close to Halloween, I thought that this might be a good game to uh, to play. I had actually thought about playing this game... Uh, in the past, but it was mentioned to me. It was uh, suggested by a couple of people in my last video, so I thought, hey, now would be a great time because it is around Halloween, and this is a sort of a spooky kind of game that would probably fit into that theme very well. So, and it's an AGI game. It's based on the uh, on Sierra's AGI adventure game interpreter engine, which uh, you can probably tell by the graphics. Uh, I'm playing this. So when you download Enclosure, this game, it comes with NAGI. Uh, which is a uh, an AGI interpreter for Windows, and it works pretty well. It works very well. I mean, it runs AGI games under Windows without any serious problems. The one thing I really don't like about it is that font. I don't know how you folks feel about the font, but I just find AGI's font atrocious. I find it borderline unreadable, and every time I see it, I just want to... I really would prefer that it use the original Sierra AGI font, because I just find this font... Uh, Wow, it's it's awful. If anybody knows how to change the fonts in AGI, uh, I would appreciate a bit of information to that effect because I don't know how... There is a font file that comes with it, and I assume you can replace the font files, but I don't know where you'd get replacement font files from, and I'm not familiar enough with the file format to actually start trying to design my own fonts for an AGI. But other than the, the font... Um, it works pretty well, and it, NAGI does add some nice things like the sound. You've probably already noticed that the sounds are a little bit more, a little bit nicer, a little bit more detailed and textured than what you'd get from the standard uh, DOS AGI engine. Uh, because this is a real AGI game, you can play this in DOS if you copy the AGI uh, executable from a from another Sierra game and just copy the data files from this game over it. Um, 
you can actually play this in DOS, but when I tried that, I started getting memory errors. The game usually crashed with an out-of-memory error around the helicopter scene, so I figured, hey, uh, it comes with an AGI. I might as well just use an AGI because it seems to work fine. So, so let's go ahead and uh, start the game. Uh, one other thing I do want to say, I have played this game before uh, a, a few years ago, but it was a while ago. I don't remember it very well at all because I only played it once, and... Um, I do have a walkthrough here in case I get really stuck, but I'm going to be playing this kind of semi-blind, which is something I don't usually do. Usually the games that I've played are games that I am pretty familiar with because I've played them several times. You know, they're old Sierra Adventures, which I've played through countless times, and so I, I know pretty much everything's going to happen. But this is going to be a, a new thing for me as well. We're going to go on this adventure together and discover things together because I am going to this like I said, semi-blind in the sense that I've, I've, I've seen the game before, I've, I've played through it before, but that was long ago enough that it's pretty indistinct in my memory. So let's go. Let's get started now. Let's take a look around. Can I just type, look, this is your bedroom. Although it is not as cozy as yours at home, it certainly is comfortable. Can you put a hyphen at that point in all, though? I think hyphens, I think the rule is that you can only put a hyphen where a syllable breaks. So I guess that that is a syllable break there, but I think it would have been... For some reason, I feel like it would have looked nicer just to keep that as one word, but anyway. All right. From the bathroom, you hear singing. It's Sarah taking a shower. All right. Uh, let's see. Funny thing, uh, I just realized this game also has a white male protagonist who uh, starts off the game, um, or the game starts off introducing his black girlfriend. I just I, I say that's funny because I recently started playing a game called The Vacuum, which is an adventure game. It's it's a um, uh, it's not AGI. It's uh, AGD adventure. No wait, uh, AGS. Sorry, Adventure Game Studio. Good grief, I'm forgetting my acronyms. Adventure Game Studio, the big blue cup that uh, that everybody makes adventure games with these days. It's an it's uh, it's an AGS game. Um, and it owes a lot to Yahtzee's Seven Days a Skeptic. If you've played Seven Days a Skeptic, you'll see the inspiration in the vacuum instantly from the moment you start it. Um, but it also has a white protect. You also play a white guy who happens to have a black girlfriend, uh, just coincidentally. I don't think there's really any particular reason for that. I just just realized that it's kind of kind of interesting that I just happen to be playing two games at the same time that have that sort of same edgy interracial relationship going on. Anyway, uh, let's see. Let's look at some stuff around here. Uh, can you look at the bed? The bed looks nice and soft. All right. Um, I'm going to assume that there's some stuff here that we can look at, but I'm not sure what it is. Like, is that a, I guess that's a window. All you see is total whiteness. Okay. Is that uh, a curtain or blinds in the window? They filter the fierce sunlight. Okay. Is this a control panel or something in the wall? You can look, but you can't touch. Can I open the, the panel? Stop that. Oh, is that a generic response? If I try typing something like open, um, I don't know, what can I try to open? Open window? I'll let all the heat out? No way. Besides, it doesn't open anyway. I, mean, I guess opening windows in Antarctica is probably not a good idea when you're inside naked because it's probably something like minus 60 or 70 degrees outside. Uh, let's see, what's this thing on the wall? I don't even, what is that black thing? Is that a, a video screen or? What can be said about these walls? They're gray to begin with. Okay, here we go. There are also two lamps hanging here. There's a television set installed in the far left wall and a couple of house rules on that piece of paper. All right. Finally, on your right is a small panel with lots and lots of buttons. Above the door, like every door here, is an electronic eye. Okay. Well, I was I was worried the game was just going to tell me that the walls are gray and leave it at that, but actually it gave me a lot more information than I was hoping for, so that's that's nice, actually. I guess more information is better than not enough. Uh, without these two, people won't be able to see anything at night. Okay. Is there night here? I mean, don't they have polar, uh, Antarctic... Wait. For some reason I thought we were in Antarctica, but no, we're in Greenland, not Antarctica. What am I thinking? Why did I think this is Antarctica? But the game explicitly said it's Greenland. I don't know, I'm getting all mixed up. I'm so confused, I must be getting old. All right, uh, let's see, can we look at the television screen? The television in the wall beside the bed is currently off, and that thing on the table is a laptop. Yeah, I, it, I guess the game mentioned that just in case I thought that thing on the table over here is a laptop, but it, it does look kind of like a computer. Well, 
doesn't really seem to have a keyboard, does it? I guess that black thing at the bottom is the keyboard, but it looks more like part of the frame or the bottom of the screen. But anyway, all right, can I turn on the television? Maybe later, all right. What's this on the, the night table there? Is that a telephone? On top of the table lie your clothes and your laptop. Oh, wait, no, that it means that green t table back there. And I mean, is, is it maybe a nightstand? What? I typed look nightstand and it tells me about the lights. Uh, is that a telephone sitting there? I've never heard of a telephone. Good for you. Your, li your quality of life is probably better for that. Okay, let's look at this list of house rules. House rules, nothing more. Okay, can I read them? Uh, okay. I guess they're not relevant to the game, but I'd still be curious enough to to read them and to know what they say. Um, is that a that blue thing? Is that a trash? Mm, okay, I guess this is a trash can, just as I'd rather not. All right, let's look at the computer. There's plenty of time for that later, Mike. Uh, okay. Uh, all right. Can we open the closet? No, that's not necessary if you want to complete this game. All right. Well, I guess uh, a logical thing to do would be to go into the uh, into the bathroom and uh, freshen up and powder our nose. This is your this is your bedroom. Oh. Yeah, I actually was trying to look inside the bathroom. Look at the bathroom. The bathroom is located at the far right. I know that. I'm already there. I'm just... Sarah's taking a shower. Yes, I know that too. I'm trying to... Uh, can we look at Sarah? Okay. Uh, can we talk to Sarah? Did you sleep well, honey? You ask Sarah. I surely did, sweetheart. Sarah answers. All right. Can we uh, perform various further acts? You show Sarah your affection. Okay. Can we show her a little more affection? No, okay. Uh, can we get in the shower and join her? Come again? Can I just say shower? Is there any room for me left, Sarah? Of course, sweetheart. There's always room left for you. You take a nice refreshing shower, then you dry yourself and kiss Sarah. Ah, oh, that's sweet, and we got a point for that. Um, is there anything else I need to do here? Do I need to brush my teeth? Do I need to use the toilet? How long is Sarah going to be in the shower? I mean, we took a shower with her and she's still in there. Is she just going to stay there? I guess so. All right. Um, can I use my laptop now? No. All right. Do I just get my clothes and get dressed now? You take your clothes and put them on. Oh, we got another point for that. All right. Now can I use the computer or am I just supposed to... Whoa. Oh, now I can use the computer. What is this? This is like uh, your Hank's Quest victim of society screensaver. Uh, why? What? Why was that a victim of society? Because he was playing ball in a in a suburban house's backyard with. Uh, okay. Uh, right. I think that's it. I think that's all we can do in this room. Uh, I don't think I can turn on that television. No. Uh, can we just take a look at this panel here? Oh, come on. Can we use the panel? Use what with what in the what? What? What what in the panel? Uh, is that a grate down there? It supplies fresh air. Okay, let's open the grate and crawl inside because that's what you do in an adventure game. It doesn't need to be open to supply fresh air. Well, I wasn't trying to supply fresh air. I was trying to see what's in the in the air duct because that that is what you do in an adventure game, isn't it? I think that's all we can do here. I guess we have to go outside. Hello, Mr. Goodman. Trust you had a good night's sleep? I sure did. I think that should be nights, as in night apostrophe S. Me too, Mr. Green. I could sure use some breakfast now. I'm starving. Well said, Mr. Goodman. I was just going to the bar myself to have a quick bite to eat. I have become quite hungry after my little walk around the station. Well, breakfast sure sounds great. I'll be there in a short while. Ben Green nods his head and he leaves through the door. Okay. Um, not much to see here. This is one of the hallways. I sometimes... I'm starting to get the feeling that this game might have been made by somebody whose native language isn't English because there are some bizarre 
spellings that just seem to be that that seem to invoke some other sort of European language, like the way they spelled apartment with two P's, or the fact that there's a hyphen here in hallways, or the fact that they used a period for a, you know, for a, uh, not for a decimal, but for like a place separator in the in the uh, for in the ten thousand number. Um, I guess the only thing to look at here is the fire extinguisher. The fire extinguisher is mainly red and always comes in handy whenever there's a fire. Uh, can we get the extinguisher? There's need to do so there's no fire. Well, yes, I know there's no fire right now, but maybe you can pick it up and use it when there is a fire later on. All right. Uh, can we go through this door? Oh, yes, we can. Oh, I thought... I might have thought maybe that people would lock their doors, but apparently they don't. Uh, this is the bedroom of Dr. Ching, Chin Sung Lee. There is a penetrating smell hanging here caused by the little pots of smoking incense. I mean, it's nice. It's not a a bad thing. It's not like a negative stereotype. I just think it's a bit amusing that there's this stereotype that Asian people have little bonsai trees and drink tea. And I mean, I don't think all Asian people have bonsai trees, but anyway. Let's take a shower in, uh, this isn't your room nor your shower. Uh, I didn't ask if this was my room or my shower. I said to take a shower. I don't care if it's not my room or my shower. I can take a shower here if I want to. All right, uh, can we open the closet? This is the large wardrobe, yeah, okay. Uh, got the little bonsai tree. A Chinese with a bonsai tree figures. All right, all right, well. Like I said, it's not a negative stereotype. I just think it's kind of funny because, you know, I mean, not all Asian people have bonsai trees. Some of them have full-size trees. Some of them don't have trees at all. Um, we have a tree and then we have some tea. Wait. Wow. I spelled it the German way. I've, I've been... Uh, I'm actually forgetting how to spell things in English now because I'm, I'm getting used to spelling things the German way. T in English is spelled with an A, I'm sorry. Oh, never mind. The game doesn't understand T in the with the English spelling either. Okay. Okay, forget it. Uh, can I sleep in the bed? You're not sleepy. Well, that's not really a deterrent to getting into the bed, but all right. All right, let's go ahead. I guess I can go down or up. Let's just randomly go up for no reason. Uh, what do we have here? Uh, this is one of the hallways with a hyphen. All right, can I go in here? Yes, I can. This bedroom belongs to Lisa McIntyre. It's quite a comfy room. Uh, all right, let's take a shower in her shower. All right. Can I look at the uh, closet? No. What's on Lisa McIntyre's table? Until we see some makeup belonging to Lisa McIntyre, there's also a, a lab top, almost similar to yours, only a bit smaller. Look at the uh, computer. This one's similar to your own laptop, but let's just say that size doesn't matter. Well, yeah, okay. Can we get... You've got your own, yeah. But I don't. It's not in my inventory. Look, I'm carrying nothing. All right, uh, let's look at the bed. Better say this off. On top of her bed sits her teddy bear. Can we get the bear? I think Lisa wouldn't like that. Well, I didn't really ask if she would like it, did I? I just said take the take the teddy bear. But, but yeah, let's, let's be nice and... Oh, this room is locked. Can I knock on the door? Knock, knock. You get no response. Well, you know what to do when you get no response. Knock again. Okay, so you get no response. I guess that's the end of that. All uh, right, what's this uh, picture on the wall? What did I? Oh, for some reason the... I'm pretty sure I pressed E at the end there, but for some reason it didn't. Uh, it's an old movie poster. All right. Uh, can you tell me more about the poster? Oh, here we go. It's a ripped-up poster of some old movie. You can't actually read the title, but the inscription tells you it's a movie from 1982 starring Kurt Russell. Uh, I did actually look this up, and uh, Wikipedia or IMDb will both tell you that uh, Kurt Russell was in only one movie in 1982, and that movie is The Thing, which, if I remember right, is a movie... I haven't actually seen the movie, but I think it's uh, about people stuck in a research station on Antarctica or something like that. Maybe that's why Maybe that's why I thought that this was um, Antarctica, because I was confusing it with the thing, since that thing is in the in the uh, poster there. Anyway, um, 
I think they didn't want to give the name of the movie just to avoid any potential copyright issues since obviously, you know, it's a it's a commercial movie and I guess they thought that there might be some legal liability if they start mentioning it, even though I think just mentioning the name of the movie is not going to get them into trouble. But anyway, yeah, if you uh, if you, you look at the picture, it's obviously meant to resemble the cover art. It, it does obviously resemble the cover art for uh, the movie The Thing. In fact, let me go ahead and show you. I'll just drag it in here, and you can see that is the, uh, that is the Thing. So yeah, it's obviously meant to uh, to look like that. So... So yeah, I guess that was some inspiration for this game, and so it's just giving a giving a nod to something that inspired the uh, the setting or the plot of this game. Here's nothing but that plant. It's Chuck the plant. Can we get Chuck the plant? Sure, since this is your plant, you can take it anytime you want. No, wait, it's not your plant. So you decide to leave it alone. All right. All right, whose room is this? This is Owen Carter's bedroom. A lot of expensive equipment is decorating the room. Let's take it all. Let's get the expensive equipment. Act like an adult and don't play around with other people's belongings. I didn't say play around with it. I said take it and borrow it for uh, for research. All right, what's Owen got on his table? Expensive tools a paranormal investigator can't do without. I guess I can't, can't get anything. All right. All right. And what's in this room? This is Charles Benson's room. Uh, Dr. Benson seems to be a collector of rare viruses, judging by the labels on the, on the jars at the table. Oh boy, this will be fun. Let's, uh, let's get some of the jars. Leave it be. Uh, really? That sounds like uh, something that you could definitely do some, something with. Uh, what's this purple thing hanging on the closet? Dr. Benson. Dr. Benson, his spare suit is hanging from the wardrobe, okay? Yeah, definitely get the feel that uh, this is not, that this game was not made by a native English speaker. I mean, the English is generally pretty good, but there are some phrasings like that that are just, uh, kind of give me the feeling that uh, this was not quite, anyway, can we get the suit? Leave it. It's not your color. Oh, what's wrong with the color? It's a very nice purple color. That's, uh, that would be a lovely suit for anyone to wear. All right. Joker's tip. This game knows a couple of shortening for words you'll probably be using a lot. L for look, T for talk, O for open, D for door, and G for get. And an easy mnem mnemonic to remember that is L Todd G. Because, uh, L Todd G is, well, it's not really anything, but if it were a word in English, then that could have been a mnemonic. Sorry, it's not my fault that it's not a word. So I the extinguisher in a panel looks pretty great. Okay, so there is a panel there. Can I open the panel? No, no, just don't. It's not necessary. All right. Gosh. No, no, go back. Think of what we could do with Area 51. Uh, I think this door goes outside. Yeah, this is the main entrance. All right. Maybe we'll try going outside. I, even the, the game probably won't let us, but... I don't know. I'll try it, but I'll probably do that in the next video because I've already been doing this for about 38 minutes. So I guess this is a pretty good place to stop. I'll go ahead and save. And yeah, just save here as uh, um, by the main entrance. All right. That was that. I'll go ahead and leave there for now. Thank you for watching, everyone. I hope that, uh, hope that uh, you enjoy coming along with me on this little uh, Greenland adventure, even though we haven't really seen much of Greenland so far, we've mostly just seen the inside of the research station. And I think we probably will see, mostly just see the research station in this game, but who knows, maybe the game will surprise us with uh, fun and surprises and uh, things like The Thing in, you know, the movie, The Thing, about The Thing. Yeah. So, I will go ahead and stop for now. Once again, thank you for watching, everyone. Take care of yourselves, and uh, hopefully we will see you in a future occurring video. Bye-bye for now.